Okay, question number one of the square root sheet. Goal, get the x squared alone on the left so you can take the square root of both sides. So I have to eliminate the plus seven by doing a minus seven to both sides, cross his ass out. I mean, seven minus seven is zero. So 37 take away seven is 30. Now I'm gonna stop here a second because I saw a couple of people take the square root at this point. This is a very bad mistake. You cannot root this now because then you end up with a radical two here. You don't want this. You need to divide the two away, right? The opposite of multiplying by two is dividing by two. So you divide the two away. So then 30 cut in half is 15. Now you are ready to take the square root of both sides. The square root eats the two and you're left with X. On the other side, you have plus and minus, very important. You gotta get both roots. Radical 15. Now, 15 doesn't break down. What are you gonna do? Five and three? Fine. Radical five and radical three are not perfect squares. They don't come out of jail. So that's what you get. Again, plus and minus has to be there because you have to catch both roots. Every number has two roots, a positive one and a negative one. Okay, problem two. You have a plus, so you have to do the opposite of that, which is subtract. But whatever you do to the left, you have to do to the right. So a positive 24 and a minus 24 are going to cancel out, and you get negative 24. Uh-oh. Now I'm going to take the root of both sides, square root and square, eat each other up, and you're left with x. Over here, you get plus and minus radical negative 24. Very important. Seen this before. When you have a negative, you got to take it out. Now be careful. Don't hop it across the plus and minus. When you take the negative out, it goes right in front of the radical. Now 24, you're going to break down with 4 and 6. We put 12 and 2. You have to break the number down. I mean, I see people, students are still doing it, you know, like 8 and 3, 12 and 2. It's like, you need to pick a perfect square. You know, you don't want to pick eight. You don't want to pick 12. You want to pick four. Four is the perfect square that's divisible into 24. Now, who comes out of jail? He comes out of jail as a two. And again, be careful. Where does the two go? I mean, do you see how these three things are all to the right of the plus and minus? You cannot take this two and go hop it over there. It has to stay with the I. So you put your plus and minus, four comes out of jail is two, hook them up with the I that's waiting, and then radical six. I know my I looks funky. So you get plus and minus two I, radical six. You cannot put this two up here, you cannot put the I over there. It has to stay, all have to be together. This is all one big product. It's all multiplication. Okay, question three. This was a good one. A lot of people got stumped here. Now, you have the square root, I mean, you have the square term all by itself already. So you can actually dive in for step one and just take the square root of both sides. Again, the square root and the square cross each other out. And you get what was inside the parentheses unchanged. This does not change, you just take it right out. And on the other side, you get plus or minus radical 49. Huh, not so bad. But I know what the square root of 49 is. 49 is a perfect square. He's on my list to get out of jail. So take him out as a seven. Cool, okay. Now I have to get rid of this. I need, I need X alone. So I have to do the opposite of subtracting four, which would be to add four. So I add four to the left, they cross out. Four take away four is zero, you get X. Now on the other side, you have to put the four here in the front. I know some people wanna write it over there. It's, it's backwards though. So now from here, <laughs> what I saw people do was just go, oh, Four and seven make 11, plus or minus 11. Oh my God, that was so easy. But there's a huge flaw <laughs> with that thinking. This is not what you have. You have four plus seven, and you have four take away seven. You are adding them and you are subtracting them. Now, four plus seven is 11, but four minus seven is negative three. These are your two answers. So you have to add the pair of numbers you got and subtract them. It only works 
because 49 came out of jail. You know, if this had like a radical two attached to it, you can't do that. You can't do four plus seven radical two. That doesn't work. It only works because four and seven are like terms. They're numbers. It's four dollars and seven dollars. You can combine that. You know, it's not, you know, if, if anything else was there, even an I, you can't do four plus seven I. That's not 11 I. Remember what I said, idiots? Four dollars and seven idiots. It's 11 idiots. It's not. All right. So this is what you get. You have to be very careful. You will see a question like this on a quiz or exam, I promise. And you can't stop here. If you're able to combine them, you split them up and you combine them. It's very important you do this. Question number four. Okay. And again, I apologize. The lighting here is very dark out today. I have three X squared minus four equals 32. First step. I want this alone. X squared needs to be by itself. So I'm going to do a plus four to both sides, cross them out. And now I have three X squared equals 36. Now this is very dangerous because people will see a 36 and be like, oh man, you square root. I know the square root of 36 is six, but can't do this. You have a three here that you have to account for. This is three times X squared. So you have to divide by three. You don't have a choice. You cannot use the square root property until this is alone with nothing else near it. It can have no other numbers on that side. So all the numbers have to be gone. The four, the three, they have to be gone. So 36 divided by three is 12. Aha, you see? Take the square root of 36 and get six days. Screwed, totally wrong. Now, square root both sides. Here I get X. You get plus and minus radical 12. Now, I mean, if, they, if, if after all this time you can't break 12 down, right? Four and three. Like, why not six and two? So four comes out of jail. Six don't come out of jail. Two don't come out of jail. But radical four does. So again, add the four, divide by the three. Now the squared term is all alone. You can use the square root property. Don't forget your plus and minus. Break down 12. Pull out the four as a two. Done. It's not, it's not a difficult question. But again, you have to follow the steps. You have to show them all very carefully. And there's a lot of places you can forget stuff. A lot of people forget the plus minus. Make sure it's there. Okay, fixing my broken video. Notice a change in color here. I need to fix the video by doing five and eight. So this is number five. One through four turned out to be just fine. So this question comes out kind of nasty, actually. The first thing you want to do is add a seven, right? You have to do the opposite of taking away seven, which is adding seven. So on that side, you're going to get a negative one. On this side, you're going to get the 4x plus 5 squared. Now, you've met your first goal of getting the squared alone on the left side. Now, I've got to take the square root of both sides. So put the little radical. Remember, square root and square eat each other and go away. Yay. Goodbye. So I get 4x plus 5 alone. On the other side, I have plus and minus radical negative 1. But this is our old buddy I, right? The square root of negative one. What lets us take this negative in the front is the fact that this is I. Whoops. So the square root of negative one is I. So you have to replace the radical negative one with I. And again, you can bring this down. <coughs> now you have to do the opposite of plus five, which is subtract five. The question is, where do you put it? You have to put it on the left of that plus and minus, right? This is where it goes. The I is on the right of the plus and minus and the negative five. No, don't forget that negative. Now divide both sides by four <coughs> and you're all done. Get negative five plus and minus I all over four. I mean, this is a nasty ass answer. It looks horrible to me, but you know, listen, this is this is what it comes out to. Don't do anything else. Don't split this up. Don't make two fractions. Don't do negative five plus i, negative five minus i. I don't want you to do anything else to it. Leave it just like that. That is your final answer. Okay, the last problem in my repairing the broken video. Question eight. This is probably the the trickiest one because there's there's a lot to this. It's very involved. Opposite of Taking away five is adding five. So your first step again, 
get the squared thingy alone on the left. This has to go. I eliminate it by adding five, but you have to do it to the other side. So this is the first potential trap. If you combine these numbers wrong and somehow make an 18, I can very easily see people taking the 13 and a five and making negative 18 out of it. And you know, like 18 breaks down, right? Radical nine, radical two, and you think, oh, I did this right, but it's not right. So be careful, that's negative eight, right? You owe me 13, you pay me five, you owe me eight. Now I have the, the square thingy is alone. I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. The square root and the square cancel each other out and you're left with two X minus four alone. On the other side, I have plus and minus radical negative eight. Now again, we're gonna break that radical down. Then we're gonna start moving everybody away from the X. First, the negative comes out. Now remember, I see this mistake all the time. People will take the negative and then they'll take the I and they'll write that. This thing is on the right of that plus minus. You cannot then take this I and put it on the left of the plus minus. That just does not work. So you have to stay on the right side. So the I comes directly in front of the radical and eight, I'm gonna break down with four and two, right? So a negative comes out in the front, it stays on the right of that plus minus. And then the radical four and the radical two. Now break them down. You can free the four from jail. He comes out and again, where is he? He's on, he's with the I. He's on the right side of the plus and minus with the radical two. Now I'm gonna add four to cross that out. When I add the four, that's where you put it on the left of the plus minus. It's very important that you have things on the correct side or you screw up the whole problem. These are, these are really easy mistakes to make, putting them on the wrong side. I, I see students do it all the time. This problem is very involved because of all of the things you have to do. Now divide by two. Remember, I'm dividing everybody by two. I'm dividing him by two and this by two. So you're dividing the four by two and the two I radical two now. He's in jail. Remember what I said repeatedly. The dude outside jail is not going in there. So the two in the jail, you can't mess with. The radical, you're stuck with that radical two. However, this and this are both divisible by that two. So I'm gonna divide them all by two, cut them all in half. All the numbers get cut in half. So the bottom is a one now, it's gone, right? It's just a one, so you don't have to write it. So you get a two, be very careful. Half of four is two, plus and minus is still there. You didn't do nothing to it. That two is a one now, so you're just left with I, and the radical two, you weren't allowed to mess with that anyway. Leave it like this, please. Do not write two plus I radical two and then two minus I radical two. You don't need to do this. Don't split it up into two. It doesn't make any sense to do that here. All right, they don't combine. So what, what's the purpose of splitting it? You leave it like that, that one answer. So there's a lot of steps there, right? Get the square thing alone, take the square to both sides. Be very careful about breaking this down, about keeping everybody where they belong. Everybody that went with him has to be on the right of that plus minus. When you start moving things to the other side, that's when you get somebody to the left of that plus minus. And again, this answer looks a lot like a quadratic formula answer, which we will do eventually. All right, so now I'm gonna to try to splice this into the video, see how well it works. You see change in color. <laughs> 